so i think emotions in trading happen to be the most important yeah. thing which is why hedge funds in new york have therapists in house therapy oh is it the market can go sideways your stock can go sideways or it can go up which is great or it can go lower i want you to sit down in a quiet room and visualize every circumstance no one visualizes the negative side of things yeah i'm not asking you to manifest the worst things but i'm you asking to you to be it. prepared in your head <laughs> yeah. once you've waged the battle in your head your brain doesn't panic and it's quite evident your psyche and your brain doesn't know reality from fiction which is why when you wake up from a nightmare you're all sweaty yeah. that wasn't your reality but your brain didn't know better emotional strength is one of the greatest things to have in trading one of the greatest <laughs> Hello Karan welcome to the gut feel show how are you doing I'm doing very well today thank you thanks for having me it, it feels nice it's quite a setup <laughs> the pleasure is mine because there's a very interesting topic that we mm. will be getting on to yeah first of all let's begin with your journey from law to stock markets tell me a bit about that well it's it's actually not an extraordinary journey but it's quite interesting nonetheless I've always been exposed to the markets so I went to law school around 2013 okay and since then I've been putting money in the markets of course I had some mutual funds and I would buy randomly I was reading a lot of Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch and all these fundamental mm, guys yeah, yeah. uh just getting my hands on any sort of literature and if that literature mentioned any strategy I parked money in the markets Naturally I made a bit of money I lost a bit of money I was all over the place but the thing was I was exposed to the markets mm -hmm. why I was exposed to the markets was because the stock market is always spoken of in a very positive manner at home okay it is definitely not spoken of as an instrument of gambling mm -hmm. and I think that was the most important thing I knew and I was made to believe I had been imbibed with the conviction that this is a place where money can be made and money can be lost the majority loses the minority also makes a lot of money and there has to be a way to go about it mm. there has to be a strategy it's just that we are not aware of the strategy yeah. having this mindset as a premise was the best thing that could have happened to me which meant i was always on the lookout to learn more and come 2018 i graduate from law school and i get a litigation job with one of the finest bosses in chandigarh at the punjab and haryana high court okay had a tremendous time and litigation is superbly hard i'd say yes. you're working 12 hours a day pretty much that's all you do there's nothing else you can do with your life and i realized okay i need to take a breather i need to decide what i want to do with my life because this is not the way i want to proceed I know you're young you're supposed to hustle and you're supposed to give in the hours but if I hustle until 40 and then I make it I've also lost some of the finest years of my life True. anyway that was not uh something I wanted to do with myself because you see you wake up in the morning even if you're not hungry you got to stuff yourself with breakfast yeah go for that drive and then clock in sometimes you're done with work but you've just got to sit there because yeah. you can't leave until everyone's left you know it's so one of those situations i quit my job i didn't want to quit law because i loved law i love speaking in court when i speak in court people tend to listen the judges tend to tend to listen but uh, covid happened right then ah uh, yeah i quit my job today 3 days later the lockdown was announced i drove back home i just never went back when i drove back home it was lockdown we were awake all day all night because my sister was home from united states oh. she was working us hours and uh, we just got in a puppy golden retriever oh. oika he just come in and he was so boisterous so we were up all day all night and you know before the second wave hit it was just a very positive time everyone was getting family time we were chilling i was learning a lot about trading and technical analysis okay because i realized there has to be something when stocks fall the best stocks also fall yes and nothing is spared but when they rise it doesn't matter if you're the best company on earth some of the poorer companies also tend to outperform yeah so i realized there has to be something more than fundamentals and i got into technicals very heavy started reading all the literature a lot of podcasts got on uh, calls with the uh, certain traders that i knew from my school itself from boarding school 
and that's how I began my journey and I realized this is what I, what I want to do. This is, I, this is what I want to dedicate myself to. Because it also fit in with a lot of other things. If, um, you know, they say you manage your time when you're trading, right? Naturally, uh, you have the market open. Of course, you're busy, but you've got to wake up early. That's something I would have liked to imbibe in my life and inculcate. You got to be disciplined because if you're not disciplined in the markets, if your mind is not sthir is the mm, word, sthir, right? Yeah. Then you cannot make a lot of money. You'll be all over the place. You're going to be whipsawed by the markets all the time. I want to know uh, more about this. I want you to elaborate this just, uh, word that you just said. The mind has to be sthir. Mm -hmm. Markets have to do a lot with the emotions and the psychology of the person in that is getting involved into the market. Certainly. And because it is a very big pool, there's a lot of human behavior that is involved in the market behind the numbers. We yes. see the numbers. Yes. Behind the numbers, there's a huge emotion that is coming in. Absolutely. Tell me more about the emotions part. Okay, I want you to just think of the chart. Whatever, Whenever we see prices plotted on a computer screen, that's a price chart of a stock. Mm -hmm. And that's something technical analysts use heavy. Okay. Let's not get into a single number or what the stock does or what the company does or what sector it comes from or how old the company is. Let's leave everything aside. If I give you any security plotted on a price chart, that is basically showing you the market psychology as a whole of the market participants. Yeah. The stock cannot go up without demand and it cannot fall without selling interest. And who creates demand? It's people with lots of money to make a difference. Mm. My money when I trade in the markets makes no difference. I'm a drop in the ocean. Yeah. Institutional money, people with 5,000 and 50,000 crores. When they do something, the signs are all over the chart. Mm. Humans get greedy at the same time. They panic at the same time. All of this is available for study on a price chart. It's how deeply you get into it and how deeply you analyze it. A lot of people profit from this because they let the panic run out. Hmm. When stocks plummeted during COVID, uh, uh, cities were shut, travel was shut, workplaces were shut, stocks were rallying, Yeah. right? The retail money was out, the smart money was in. There was a consensus that this pandemic is gonna be curtailed there was a consensus that a vaccine might be around the corner and we're gonna get ahead of this. Retail money wasn't aware of this. The yeah. smart money was. We could have seen the charts and studied the market psychology. The market psychology told us that the market participants, the ones who matter, believe that the market has turned around and we must get into a bullish euphoric situation. So I think emotions in trading happen to be the most important yeah. thing, which is why hedge funds in New York have therapists, in-house therapy. Oh, is it? Because if you're, absolutely. If you're, and traders also have performance coaches. Yeah. Yeah. If you're trying to outperform the market, firstly, that isn't easy. Mm -hmm. To do it day in and day out is not easy. There will be a time where you will make a mistake, a very heavy mistake. How do you bounce back from this mistake? Last year, the US investing champion is an Indian fellow called Govardhan Gajala, okay. right? And the interesting thing is, five months, the first five months of the year, he was in a profit. The sixth month, I think he lost it all. Oh, so yeah. he was break even and he's entered this competition. And then the next six months, he outperforms the market and how. You can only do that once you're obsessed with the process and once you have a strong mind. And a strong mind in trading is heavily linked with visualization and strengthening your mind on a daily basis. What we do as traders is we want to visualize every possibility that could happen with a stock. Say you've bought a stock, you have invested 10 lakh rupees. Everyone's bought it to make money, right? Yeah, yeah. But that is the sole purpose. That is the sole purpose and that's a good purpose. But that's not how life is going to operate all the time. You want to visualize what can happen with your money from today onwards, once you've parked it. The 10 lakhs, the market can go sideways, your mm -hmm. stock can go sideways, or it can go up, which is great, or it can go lower. 
I want you to sit down in a quiet room and visualize every circumstance. No one visualizes the negative side of things. Yeah. I'm not asking you to manifest the worst things. What I'm you asking to you to be prepared, prepared in your prepared head. Yeah. Once you've waged the battle in your head, your brain doesn't panic. And it's quite evident your psyche and your brain doesn't know reality from fiction. Which is why when you wake up from a nightmare, you're all sweaty. Yeah. That wasn't your reality. But your brain didn't know better. You know that song from Three Idiots? Dil Bevkoof hai isko samjhale or something to that tune? Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Convince yourself of certain situations and those certain situations are more likely to unfold provided you are committed to the process. Mm, very interesting. So, I mean, it has so many analogies from life. It's, it's beautiful, but uh, emotional strength is one of the greatest things to have in trading. One of the greatest. Because why are supports created in the market? It's a technical term. Yeah. A support is any price level where the, pri where the stock price tends to bounce from. Yeah. For instance, uh, Zoom had IPO'd shortly before COVID, I believe. And during COVID, the stock price absolutely blasted because everyone was using zoom now yeah. right um, i mean it's a no-brainer yeah. offices were shut after that it's come right back to where it started so it's given up all its gain and now it's bouncing from 60 dollars or so 58 to 60 dollars consistently this level is a zone of support here we believe people with emotional strength would likely build positions and the ones who've taken a loss, who've been scarred In by this particular stock, will not touch it with a pitchfork. They won't touch panic. it. They, they, they are absolutely destroyed in the head. Hmm. Some of them believe the market's a gamble. Yeah, 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 most of them do. Their friends have told them that, listen, this is not for you. You should probably focus on something yeah. else. Get a nice job. Everyone does that. Families don't support. Families don't, especially India. India uh, you support. have a lot of traders abroad. In America, it's a big thing, uh, but Indian families don't support. Some of my relatives ask my father, what is he up to? Yeah. Do you think he's making the most of his potential? You see, he's home all day. And I'm, I, I tell my father, and he's very supportive, and I tell him, listen, I see light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And should things not go as per plan, because there's always that possibility, mm -hmm. I won't regret my decisions. It is one existence. So I like to... And I think I'm going off tangent a bit, but I like to uh, look far into the future and extrapolate the consequences of my decisions today. Mm, that is very important. I've right? given up law. I've come into trading and content creation, for instance, and fitness. Let's extrapolate. And I want to get into the body of an 80 year old Karan Gulati. Mm -hmm. Does he regret the switch? Does he regret? being a trader and a content creator or let's extrapolate Karan being a lawyer a full-time lawyer and probably reaching the zenith of the field but I'll always feel man I could have done so much with content and with uh, trading so you, you really got to weigh your regrets yeah. at this yeah. moment what is going to help you sleep better once you're 80 mm. because that is the last decade of your life and you have to find peace then you have and to you find can only peace. find peace because if you have no regrets most of like the least of regrets least of regrets and don't think money wise oh if i'm a lawyer i'll make more it's not money wise it's about the passion i believe or something that you really felt for uh, or something that you just really wanted to do. See, my I even named the show the gut feel thing is because I have been working in the mental health space for a very long time being a computer science engineer because this is what I feel. If I don't do it, I'll regret my old days that I didn't do it. Yeah. So, and I feel that the intuition and the gut feel is one of the strongest things that, strongest dri that drive us in life. The gut feeling and the self image is what you have about your, what you think about yourself truly. Yes. Deep down is the most important. Some people get on a call with me and they're like, Karan, I want to start trading. Where do I begin? You know, millions of YouTube videos, millions of books out there. Where do I begin? I'm like the first place to begin is with this belief that you can make it. Yeah. Without this, it's not going to happen. It has to have some optimism when you begin with. You have to be an optimist, optimist in life. Right, right? I think in life you have to be an optimist. Like, right, you mentioned uh, that you have to have that understanding that things can go south. But overall you have to be an optimist. But be aware of the cons as well. 
there can be negatives they, the, the stock can go down so i think that awareness is important but overall you have to be an optimist in this space you have to be an incorrigible optimist mm. Because things will go south. Will go south. Yeah. But that is what we pray for. When we <laughs> often go to the Gurdwara, and it's a, it's a big part of Sikhi, we pray to God that you know, if we fall down, lift us back up. Because falling is a part of the process. It's how uh, tremendously and ferociously you bounce back. In trading, if you take 10 trades, seven are gonna work. If you're good, if you know what you're doing, three are not gonna work. And this is when you're the best at what you do. So a loss is an inherent part of trading, but you get better at trading once your losses are tinier and your profits are larger. You get very comfortable with being proven wrong by the market. Mm. So you develop this utter sense of humility yeah. that no matter what I am today, the market still can still prove me wrong. This gentleman, he's a star trader, a two-time US investing champion, Mark Minervini. He says, when I go into the restroom in the morning, I look at myself in the mirror and I tell myself before every trading day, today you have the potential to do massive damage to yourself. Think about it. You're sitting there at the click of a button, you've parked 50 lakh rupees. That guy's working in crores. He has the potential to do horrible things to his portfolio that very moment, every day. Once you tell yourself that, your brain starts to accept that it is capable of horrible things. Mm. Therefore, commit to the process, develop a stronger mm. mind. And all of life is a strong mind uh, situation. For example, why do we take cold showers, man? We're just trying to, to train our train mind our every mind, day. Yeah. The day cold showers get comfortable, and eventually they will, you got to find something else to challenge yourself. Yeah. So I uploaded a video recently and a lady commented what's with fitness influencers these days all of them are bathing with cold water in uh, in in winters i mean is it like a fad is it like a trend it could be but we're all trying to build resilience yeah because if That's i can one of the jump, most important skills in life one of the most important if i can jump into a cold shower even though my mind is resisting it the chances are i can do a tough project later even though i don't feel like it yeah. So it has a trickle down effect. It, it, it trains your mind slowly and sl steadily. It trains your mind for the bigger and the stronger things in life. It does. And uh, when you're telling me this uh, details of the stock market, I I just had an imagination right now. I feel that isn't all this, the understanding of the graphs and everything, a derivative of our real life. Our Absolutely. life also goes ups and up and down. Yeah. We need to understand where to bounce back, where to Absolutely. find support yeah in life and absolutely that, that is how you want to move up eventually and if you don't find support you crash absolutely is so life also uh, like a similarity so similar stocks move in four stages human life can also be divided into four stages you have 0 to 20 20 to 40 years mm. 40 to 60 60 to 80 yeah. and then we perish stocks don't perish because they are not living creatures yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. so they move in these four stages and these four stages keep getting repeated once they are absolutely trashed which is what we call a recession they are reborn reborn so after stage four which is what we call a crashing stock price stage they enter stage one again which is a stage of accumulation mm -hmm. which is when the stock prices have been beaten so much that institutional money starts buying them People like Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch and Ashish Kacholia in India, who's a brilliant in investor. People like these think the stock has been underpriced now, undervalued. Let me buy it. Because of all that buying, the stock starts its upward journey, yeah. a bullish phase, yeah. which is when the public starts participating. They're like, oh, my God, that's flying. Let me get into that. Your, your friend's going to call you. That's the flying board. Right. And then uh, the stock price rises tremendously. And the same people who were buying when no one wanted to touch the stock. These people are now sellers Selling. and public is still euphoric about it. There's amazing news. News channels are covering it. They keep buying it and the stock plummets. Mm. And then they're like, what went wrong? So it's very lack similar. Lack of awareness, mostly I believe lack of awareness and the uh, euphoric, the, the uncontrollable emotions of greed and a yeah. lot of things spikes in. Yeah. And also I think there's a lot of, lot of importance to the biases that we live with. Every one of us, if we are not having a strong mindset or a discipline mm -hmm. in life, we tend to fall for the biases yeah. because we like to be lazy. We mm -hmm. like to love the uh, known. We avoid the unknowns. 
that mm-hmm. is the bias absolutely what i know is what is the best mm-hmm. because i will hide away from everything that is unknown and i don't want to know more about it right and i think that is where people fall into the trap of the markets the bias that last time my friend bought it it went up now i will buy it it should also again <laughs> absolutely yeah. and that is the worst trap that people get into and i think a lot of India has seen a huge amount of new uh, retail investors coming in with Gen Z also and a lot of people just yeah. starting that is a very good thing as a nation mm. but I think they can also fall into a big trap do you have any advice for them to look into while they are just starting their journey and not like bolte na doodh ka jala pani bhi phook phook ke peeta hai right, it right. can be like that in the stock market see my advice for any anybody starting out the, why are people starting out because the barriers to entry are negligible yes 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 go online send in a few documents your aadhar your pan whatever There are so many easy demat account opening you've got an a demat account yeah. instantly uh any broker who's opening an account for you is probably uh, I, i think he's just gone to college or something yeah, he doesn't have yeah. any idea about any stock and people actually call their broker what should i buy that guy doesn't know it if he did he would be buying the stuff yeah, himself yeah, yeah, yeah. my advice is firstly the rewards that the stock market gives you if you read it right are enormous yeah. which is why we entered it but if you're lazy uninformed or complacent the penalties it will exact from you a calamitous yeah you have to understand both sides of the spectrum absolute wealth and absolute penury mm-hmm. you have to once you've decided that naturally you don't want the worst side of the spectrum the only way you can be on this side of the spectrum is you educate yourself amazing literature out there you know if you want to be a lawyer today or a doctor the amount of books you have to read is unreal that is i think the best gift that technology has given us yeah with with the stock market there are like about 10 books yeah. just read them cover to cover you don't like reading too bad develop the habit yeah get no comfortable no that. with discomfort once you've done that of course on the sides there's tons of material on youtube of course yeah. amazing content out there get into that without this you cannot start trading don't park your money and if you're so itchy to get your money into the market buy an index fund yeah i think that itch is the problem that itch is the people problem. have the itch because it is uh, first of all fear of missing out because i missed the rally or maybe i yeah. i i have heard a lot of stories that he made this much money he made that much money and then people have that insecurity ki i have to also do it i think yeah. it is most of the time that itch to prove it that itch. The, and they prove it at the wrong time yeah you know you meet someone and they t- they recommend a stock to you and then if it blasts they like bola tha na kaha tha na all of that if it plummets no one talks about it exactly exactly that is what no one I, talks about and this is the problem of our life that is the reason i've been also working in the mental health space because no one talks about it no one talks no about one talks it. about the dark side no one talks about the dark side when i am starting out with anything so i've learned trading i got fitter i wasn't the fittest guy i was so skinny 3 years ago i um am refining my gurmukhi these days these are all new pursuits and i'm into content creation as well not good at any of these but i'm getting there the process is of course such that you fumble a lot sometimes when i'm writing my gurmukhi i'll make a mistake sometimes with content creation i'll get things absolutely wrong let's embrace the yeah. fumbles yeah yeah why are you expecting to park money into the stock market and get it figured out instantly of course you want to enter risk first you always enter the stock market risk first what that means is before you think of all the fortune that you're going to acquire think of how much you can lose yeah once you've imagined that your brain is ready for any possibility i think karan what you rightly very rightly mentioned i feel i did a bit of um, i did a few podcasts also in the, in this space yeah i think it is broadly because we have grown up in a system in the education system which does not allow you to embrace it always the mindset in any school is about the winners it is yeah. always looking up to the winners no one is talking about the losers no one is helping the losers everyone is scared of losing yeah the scare the fear of losing begins in the school imagine in teenage that is what a kid is learning yeah what will they grow up with they, whatever they do in their life they have this habit which they have done for 7 8 years in school continuous Absolutely. every day 
yeah i think that has to completely change because a lot of i am glad that you like i maybe because it is you said your family had that kind of an ecosystem that stock markets were never bad mouthed That's and so you created a discipline for yourself right. but a lot of times i think a lot of us our generation is falling into the trap because we went through an education system which were designed for the industrial era only absolutely yeah and we are still using it Today, yeah, now in the digital age, yeah. Which, and that is what you rightly mentioned that with technology you can learn everything and there's no escape to reading and all and I think it's primarily also discipline which you yeah. rightly mentioned because if your mind is not disciplined, if you don't get up on time, if you don't have things in place, you will mess up in the stock markets. Absolutely, yeah. Because your mind is not used to uh, this planning. You know, it's so interesting you mentioned the school because, yeah, you're right. You have the runners up, we have yeah, the first yeah, position, the third, and then nobody talks nobody about the rest. Nobody talks about the rest. The way we can counter that is I want to celebrate anybody who commits to the process. Yeah. You know how they say commit to the process, the money will take care of itself. I truly believe in that. Once you're hitting the gym, taking care of your nutrition, sleeping well you've committed to the process yeah. the gains or the muscle or the better biomarkers of your blood will take care of itself mm. don't worry about the outcome don't worry don't get obsessed with the outcome but we are always just focused on the Only outcome and we, we want and to also find shortcuts to that outcome then yeah and and which is when we make like massive mistakes because as well shortcut, like ruinous mistakes yeah. shortcut is the problem of life embrace the process because if i want to hit the gym i want to do this for life if I want to be exposed to the markets, I want to be exposed for life. Yeah. Let's say I put in a, a, a buyer stock today, it blasts, I make a million dollars. Let's say, how do I repeat that? Yeah. Now I can't. You have to be consistent at it. You have to be consistent. You have to educate yourself about the process so well that the outcome has no option oh. but to be yours. Yeah favorably i think that is warren and his team does warren buffett and a lot of good traders investors does is they're not focused on how much money will their right investment make yeah but they have to be very particular about the right investment yeah how very much, particular how much it makes is what time decides a lot of tea once you buy a stock and what it does after that is not in your control it's yeah. not in my control yeah, yeah, yeah. so many factors are in place no one can tell you not even warren buffett mark minovini or peter lynch what the stock is going to do tomorrow absolutely no one if they tell you the they are absolutely scamming you there's no crystal ball in the markets we are speculating which is why we take a shot we are optimistic should things go south we are prepared yeah what better way to approach life true true that is all it is always hoping for the best but should things jrc dig jaye if we fall we know how to get back up yeah and you can't get back up without a strong mind uh, naturally, which is why you don't ever want to make anything, any ruinous mistake in the markets because you lose money, but you'll get back the money, but you don't get back the emotional confidence. Absolutely. And in life, you don't want to do anything ruinous that you end up either in the hospital or in the prison. True. Absolutely ruinous mistakes. Therefore, over speeding, for instance, doesn't make sense. Yeah. You reach your destination, what, 10 minutes early, but the risk is it's so mag mag magnificent you it's just a it's a terrible risk reward it's like you putting one crore in a stock and i tell you jane ko 90 lakh hai milne ko 10000 hai will you ever buy this investment never right no. i mean, I mean so we, we do it all the time we do it all the time in the markets in yeah. in life in life yeah. uh, once you're aware of this naturally um, things get far better for you. I think it is the attitude uh, problem which I think broadly people have to learn in all aspects of life to live a very good and healthy life holistically. I think mm -hmm. that is where things should be taken control of. Karan, tell me about the work that you're doing with your clients. What do the clients ask you about? So a lot of people usually see I'm not SEBI registered, so I can't recommend stocks. I can't guide them on how to invest their money, how to retire very well. All of that we leave to the professionals. A lot of people just want to know how to get started mm. out of a thousand books which book should i pick up and they of course uh, get in touch with me how they should get started most people want to know about mindset and discipline how they can inculcate consistency into their lives okay because they are all aware that not only will your money compound in the markets mm -hmm. But your progress in real life will also compound should you be consistent. True. Work on any project consistently, upload on social media consistently, yeah, yeah. read a book, all of it compounds. And our goal in life is to compound on the upside. 
which is why I, it's so interesting people tend to uh, get debilitating health after 50 years of age Kuch dard hota hai kahin, whatever they end up to the doctor and they're like yeah where and doctor's like listen you you've got diabetes you're a patient for cardiovascular disease all of that and they're like kya ho gaya suddenly uh, suddenly it. nothing happened since after 10 years of age whatever you were doing until 50 that's 40 years that's four decades all of that was compounding because we took the body for granted we took we... it for granted you see a burger today will not do anything to me yeah, yeah, yeah will not do anything to me i'll still get my workout in but a burger consistently every now and then oh chalta it's my cheat day mm. cheat day comes what every weekend is a cheat day yeah. I, I despise the idea of cheat days every weekend mm. right just because it's a weekend it's not a cheat day those weekends add up and then it's compounding negatively. So whatever we want to do, we want to compound positively, which is why I'm a big ardently uh, ardent supporter of 10 pages a day. Okay. Just read 10 pages mm. because that's 3,650 pages a year. All of that knowledge compounds. Compound. A friend told me, Karan, you read so much self-help. It's absolute trash. A lot of self-help just says the same thing. And I'm like, dude, I agree with you. A lot of it says the same thing. Stronger mind, visualize, stay consistent, stay dis disciplined, right? Wake up early. But you never know what line or what book will hit you. Or what uh, the way of the story they tell it. Or tell how it. the dots are suddenly yeah. going to get connected, yeah. which means you're going to wake up and you're like, enough is enough. Yeah, because see, it has to be a book connects you to the most at the right time. A lot of times we are not prepared, but we are reading. But when we are prepared in life, maybe we have had a fall. Maybe we have had a situation in yeah. life. And if you are reading that book in that time, yeah. maybe it wasn't helping you last year. But this year, it can be tremendous effect. That is you. such a good idea. Even Naval Ravi Khan said, don't read all the books on earth. Pick the best, I think, 200 books. Read them over and over yeah. again. It will impact you in the situations. Yeah. Books don't work all the time. They, they work as per the situation. Yeah. You fall and you read the right book at the right time, it can be life changing. That is how things have changed and you recommend it to the other person, it might not change their life. Absolutely. Because they are not in your situation. Mm. And that is, I, th I think, uh, how the magic that you rightly mentioned, keep on reading them again, if if possible, or maybe read the same uh, from different authors or maybe different titles, self-help right. book from different authors. Mm. Maybe some of it will work someday and it will be life-changing. It will be life-changing. And, you know, getting back to the point as to what people get in touch with me for, how do I assist people? I want to tell them that there's the 99%, which is the majority, and there's the 1%. Clearly, they are doing things differently. Charlie Munger, in one of his speeches at Harvard, I think he said, I can't tell you how to be happy because that is a very complicated affair. <laughs> I can tell you how to be miserable. Just don't do that. Avoid, avoid that. Know what to avoid. And now you're on the path to better lifestyle. So know what the 99% is doing. They are waking up late. They have no concrete idea about how they want to run their day. They go to the gym when they feel like it. The 99% waits for motivation. Yeah. The super performers and the athletes know they got to get something done when it needs to be done. All of that becomes easier once you train your brain to do hard things. Yeah. Yeah. So I keep telling people, I was at boarding school, tremendous opportunities available. I didn't make the most of it. Lazy guy, right? I, if I, if I went for a declamation, I did well, maybe a runners up, maybe I do well. If I went to play a sport, I do decently well, but I never stuck to anything. I was always waiting to feel like doing something. When I got, got bored, I gave up a project. And now I've internalized this idea, some things never get easy. Yeah. For me, waking up early has not gotten easy even after all this while. I still get it done. A cold shower has gotten easier because my body's really gotten used to the cold water. Mm. I actually jumped into the pool today. It wasn't temperature controlled. I just got inside it to expose my body to cold water. It was very comfortable. Do some things even when you don't feel like it. Yeah. And that builds resilience. So David Goggins actually says the only way to build a stronger mind is find out what you need to do, but you don't feel like doing it. Do it nonetheless and do it every day. Mm -hmm. There is no secret recipe. If you're waiting for this mind blowing revelation as to how you can build discipline, you'll keep looking and life will pass you by. And then you have huge regrets in life. Huge regrets. You pile up re uh, regrets. And that's the goal of living. 
to live without regrets. Yes, yes, that is what how you find peace. It is no magic pill that gives you peace at 60. It is how you live a life that will reduce regrets. Yeah. And that is automatically giving you peace. And automatically. And peace is not something you find. Along. Yeah. Peace is something yeah. you naturally get if you avoid some things or if you if you are disciplined and if you avoid taking regrets with you. Mm -hmm. That is how maybe you find Psycho Cybernetics, this incredible book, actually changed my mind about this. It said the majority believes that successful people are happy, but we fervently believe based on data that happy happy people are successful yeah yeah that is how it works you got to be happy first you got to be content you got to find your purpose and then go along and you know the four pillars of longevity uh we have uh, nutrition exercise which is movement and stuff like that sleep and emotional health yeah this this one is so important you could be doing everything right you could be having a broccoli salad every day moving but if you're emotionally all over the place you're stressed you have massive regrets in your life. It's going to eat away from uh, eat you from the inside, gnaw at you every day and your health is going to be all over the place. Yeah. So you want to build a life that has the least amount of regrets. That is how I think people will eventually find some stability in life. Also, Karan, there is a huge risk of uh, falling into traps since the di digital era. What I mean to say is a lot of uh, tips keep on coming through media now on Instagram as well. Is it, what do you advise? Like, uh, what do people do? Because a lot of people invest based on tips. Kisi ne bola ye le lo. Right. They just buy it. Well, I think that is the biggest scam that is happening a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. So why, why are these tips coming up? Is it someone who bought it at the bottom is now telling everyone to buy because he's making profits? Is it like that? Or? I don't know. I don't think it's so vicious like that. Okay. A lot of tips, for example, if I make a video, listen guys, I'm checking out this stock. I don't recommend it because I'm not authorized to, but I'm doing this for educational purposes. Technically, that's a tip, but it is not amounting to investment advice, right? It's no scam. I haven't bought it at an earlier level. I'm not selling it to people. What people are buying and selling will always be available to you in the public domain. When we have a news article that says so and so mutual fund bought so and so shares in so and so company, that technically is a tip. Think of every tip as information. Yeah, not something that you just directly dive into. You don't have to act upon it. You must not. You must have added conviction. Yeah. Let's say I'm buying a stock at 40 rupees. I've bought it. You're aware of it. You aped me and you bought it as well. Now the stock is trading at 35. You're all over the place. I am relaxing because I have my stop losses ready. Let's say the stock is at 45, right? You're in a 10% gain or so. Now you're wondering, should I sell? Yeah. Should I sell? What should I do? And I'm comfortable because I know I want to hold it for longer. It goes to 75, Maybe comes right looking, back. Looking at the tra trajectory also, that person is not most likely. Yeah, what I want people to develop is conviction themselves. Mm. Sure, have information from Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, from CNBC, Avaz, whatever. But please develop your own conviction because that is how you'll make sustainable profits. True. Because we not only want to make a profit, we want to make a profit over and over again, over a couple of decades. Develop the conviction and the conviction will only come from deep knowledge of the markets. Listen, if you're a busy guy, you're working a job, it's a nine to five, you can take out five minutes a day. You can take out time on the weekend to educate yourself. You've got to carve time out. If your work doesn't allow you to move, uh, to take care of your fitness and your movement and to educate yourself about things that matter to you, I don't think it's really for you. It's not sustainable. It's going to burn you out. And of course, you'll have lived a life thinking, man, I wish I knew, knew better. I wish I made better choices. True. So inner conviction is very important because the tips are always going to be there. The more content out there, why do you think the tips exist? Because there is a market for them. If no one cared about tips, the tips would not come. True. They are there. They are getting to because you. Someone is looking for it. Someone's looking for it. But don't act on it. It's your prerogative. Yeah. Please stop hating burgers for existing. Decide to not consume it. And maybe if everyone decides not to consume it, burgers will not exist because there's no demand. But that's utopian. That's yeah. never happening. Is what, what I mean to say is that uh, it is your choice. It is definitely your choice. Get... Train your willpower in discipline. So you get a tip today, 
यू चेक इट टुमारो बढ़ गया यू चेक इट द डे फिर बढ़ रहा है थर्ड डे याद बढ़ रहा है याद कर लेता हूँ मिस हो गया मिस हो गया यू विल ओनली फॉल इन टू दिस पैटर्न इफ यू हैव अ वीक माइंड ट्रू You know, true, 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 develop true, true. a strong mind, and you know, we go to the gym to build muscle. You go, don't go to the gym for two weeks; all of it is gone. Yeah. Which means all of this muscle is on loan. Yeah. And the most refreshing idea that I uh, was told that I got to know about was that discipline and willpower are also muscles. Yeah. You don't exercise them; they atrophy. Exercise them every day, which we do in the form of cold shower, doing things when we don't feel like it, turning up at the gym when we don't feel like it. we're building our reserves for willpower every day so that tomorrow once we're in a tough situation when discipline and willpower actually count we can tell ourselves dude you're better than this yeah and i think people first uh, at least a lot of people have started focusing on fitness now because uh, it is visible you see the gains yeah willpower is difficult because you don't see it you don't see it it is not visible but you have to still work on it you you still have to work on it and karan uh, let's uh, i want to end the podcast with something some as something as a take away for the viewers in terms of the books like two books that you can recommend or a, or a podcast something that you can recommend for someone who's willing to look into investments and trading what do you recommend let's see if i want to recommend just one book yeah i'd recommend how to make money in stocks by william o'neil okay why i love that book is that it's a beautiful combination of technicals and fundamentals okay both schools of thought are beautiful we must take the best from both worlds so we want to invest in good solid companies think apple alphabet all of these companies but we want to invest in them when the price is also strong true the best of both worlds in one book i think it's priced at 900 or 1000 bucks best investment ever right uh it's cheaper than a meal outside and the second book i'd recommend is on mindset Okay. Can't succeed in life. Can't succeed at trading without the right mindset. And that book for me is Mindset Secrets for Winning by Mark Minervini. Although he's a trader, but this book is not just about traders. It's for anybody who wants to level up. It's a book you want to gift to your parents and to your kids and to your spouse. Two beautiful books, life changing, and a podcast that I'd recommend uh, on YouTube. A channel called Trader Lion. Okay. they do incredible podcasts and some of the finest traders come and uh, get online and they show their trades oh. and they show their strategies and they show their pnls and everything it's a pretty transparent like process or detailed analysis very detailed these podcasts are like 2 hours long best 2 hours ever and which is how i saw the podcast of this gentleman called govardhan gajla as we mentioned who's indian and a us investing champion of 2023 beautiful information out there combine this podcast with the books i've just mentioned and you level up more in 6 days or 6 months than you have in 6 years wow like a uh, tremendous so i am a constant consumer of this channel and i don't mind i am going to go subscribe them and also buy these books that you yes mentioned. please do i, I uh, yeah perfect perfect Thank you so much for all the insights Karan it was amazing talking to you and Likewise. I wanted to always get into these details with a trader because you do it day in day out right. and there's a strong mindset that is needed and it was thank you for coming to the show it was a pleasure talking to you Likewise thank you Hi thank you for watching till the end I hope you really liked the video please do comment below and tell us your feedback and also tell us the guests that you would like to have on the show we will definitely try and invite them and have on the show to discuss different aspects of well being also please do not forget to like subscribe and share because that helps us to reach out to more and more people to have the impact that we are working for thank you very much